for doing that. I threw the ball right through the window and of course scared to death, you know, because the teacher was inside. And my girlfriend and I, we ran in because I didn't want to try to get out of it. And I stood by her side. I didn't even say I did it. And she said, did you uh, break that window in? And I said, yes, I did. And so we didn't, they didn't make us pay for it or anything because it was an accident and they had somebody come in and fix the window. We played hide and seek, we played rover, rover, come over, and all, all these wonderful, and jump rope. I was so energetic that I could jump three, when they would be having one on each side of the rope, going around, jump 300 times. Wow. I got as high as 300 times without missing. I didn't get cried before, I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> That's great. Um, and I set pins in a bowling alley. Yeah, I was just about to ask, like... 8th grade, 7th and 8th grade. I, the YMCA had bowling alleys underneath it. There were duck pins. They had to, didn't have any machines then, but they, they had a middle of the floor you pushed down and spikes came up. Ten spikes came up. And I'd pick four at a time. Two in this pen and two in this hand and bing, 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 bing until I got them all. He stood in back where the uh, pins were, and when the uh, wall pins went down, then he had to pick them up and put them back onto the next floor. Right. How much did you get? Hmm? Three, three, three cents a line. Three cents a line. Three cents a line. And I, you know, he did that at, after school, and, or whenever in the evening, I guess, when they bowled. Hmm. I worked in a five and ten when I was a teenager. What is that? Uh, like Woolworths 5 and 10, Murphy's 5 and 10, it's like Kmart sort of, but they called 5 and 10. They were smaller. Yeah. They were smaller, and you could, in Christie's, and they're all gone to the wayside now. But they were fun to work in, and they gave you a part-time job, and I got a weekend to get extra money, and that was fun. Yeah. I really like that. What other jobs did you guys have? throughout your life. After I graduated from high school, I went on to college down in Pittsburgh, Mount Mercy it was at that time. And uh, I could have had a full scholarship to uh, Greensburg College, but wasn't uh, smart enough to take it. I didn't want to go there to begin with. I wanted to go into Pittsburgh. So here I turned down a full scholarship at Greensburg College. It was run by the nuns and um, went to a Mercy Order, had Mount Mercy downtown Fifth Avenue near Pitt, Duquesne, and those big schools. It was right in the middle of that. And um, it was a one, I only went for one year because mother, I didn't get a scholarship. And it was a thousand dollars a year at that time. And that was high at that time. Right. And uh, so I didn't go to, you know, pay anymore or do anything. But I had that perfect, wonderful year at downtown Pittsburgh. Met wonderful people. I have met a wonderful girl from uh, Corning, New York, mm -hmm. and they make Corning glass. You know the Corel right. stuff you use for every day uh, dishes. Her father was a CEO in that Corning glass, and her brother went to Yale, and we became really good friends. And she was a delight. It was just, it was just a wonderful year. Loved it. And then came home and got a job and. West Penn, or uh, Penn Champ Oil Corporation as the secretary, taking shorthand and typing dictation mm -hmm. and stuff. So we got until I met Jack and got married. What did you do? You went to the Royal Service. Yeah, after uh, high school, I went to the uh, service. And he told you last night how I got through high school. Do you want to tell him for the record? Yeah. English. Three English is in my senior year, and these lady, the teacher, and her mother lived together. She wasn't married, and they bought gas where I worked. And I used to wait on them all the time. Jack was very charming right from the beginning. How much did gas cost back then? Do you remember? We used to get about three for a dollar, three gallons for a dollar. About 33 to 35 cents a gallon. Dollars worth would be around seven dollars. There's seven gallons. But when I was in business for myself, sometimes we had to be even cheaper than that. I was lucky to make two cents a gallon. He didn't make very much being a service station. They used to have what the gas wars they called them. They different service stations go down below <laughs> what you were, so you had to. You had to uh, Try to stay competitive for your your customers to go someplace else. 
Jack works at the, uh, then when we got married, he had, bought, he had bought his business for $200. He didn't have a cent to his name. He went to the bank and he borrowed $200 and started this. I went to, before this, I worked at the Man and Car Company after. But, uh, that's where the Jeep was made for. You know, the, the Army Jeep, they, we originated that. We were the first to build that. In Butler. Oh. And because they were too small, then the, the big companies took over making it. The government gave them a franchise to make it. But we made the first, first Jeep. And when he went into the service, he wrote, he was a dry, he drove the jeep. He drove off an officer through the Black Forest in Germany and scared to death. And he has a lot of tales about the service that are interesting. And he called his Miss Butler. His jeep was called Miss Butler. Uh -huh. And uh, we had pictures of it in the war. Yeah, all over. Landed, landed in Scotland, come down to Scotland, to Southampton in England, and crossed, crossed the uh, pond into France, down to Paris, went to uh, went Paris, went into Belgium, Luxembourg, Holland, Germany, up to the Ruhr, 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 River and waited for the Russians. We couldn't go any further. We wouldn't let us go any further, and we had to stay there until the Russians met us. Right. And then that was something to see. The Germans scared to death of Russians swimming over that river and everything to get away from them. And Jack was taken in prisoner of war for three days, I think. And that was a scary experience for him. And when he came home from the service, even after the years that I had known him, you know, for quite a few years before we got married after the war, I took him back. And he had alpesia in the back of his head. The boys who came back, they lost hair, but in spots, and they called it alpesia. And his was as big as a quarter or a half dollar in the back of his head here. And he had that for the longest time. But then shortly after we got married, it went away. But, uh, they, from nerves. Nerves. You know, they, I guess that was nerves. That's where I got shot. <laughs> no, he didn't get shot, but his brother got shot up through the ear and here. Your brother was also in no, the... He, yeah, he went over D-Day. He was one of the ones that went in on D-Day. Oh, wow. And did he, he live? And he, after D-Day, he, he was in about seven days and went into France, and then he got hit with a shrapnel, one of the 88 shrapnels, and it knocked his shoulder off here. He had to... And I passed his hospital going down through England. I passed the hospital on the way over and I missed I didn't get didn't go until after we after we was over in France I got a, 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 a what do they call them emails or some kind of thing they sent over and I heard where he was and I went right by that hospital. <laughs> so were you both drafted? Or? Yeah. Yeah. How did they tell you? Huh? How did you get, did they just call you on the phone and tell you you have to go to war? sent you a letter. Sent you a letter. And you had to go to the courthouse. When you registered for the draft, you had a number. And so then, at the end, they would put those numbers all on a thing. And when the number came out, and that was your number, you would be notified that you were drafted. That's how they actually did it. Right. But you didn't find out about family and stuff to begin with. Hmm. You didn't find out about his family. How many brothers, sisters, that's over? So were you angry that you had to go, or were you excited? Well, I was ready, yeah. I didn't, something different, you know. It, you're around town here, small little town like, didn't get to Pittsburgh, you didn't get to, uh, We had a relative, though, we used to be out when I was a kid. I remember Dad and Mom going down to Pittsburgh to visit her brother. My mother and brother lived down there. When I was a little kid, there was an Isley in Etna, down right before you get to Pittsburgh. And the car we had wasn't very good. And I, re I remember on the way down, I'd get sicker than that and talk and have to stop and throw up, and then they'd give me an ice cream cone. <laughs>